Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Using Opposites Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn common opposite adjectives like near and far, hot and cold, and grammar rules on how to use these words in a sentence. Second, the How to Say Goodbye PDF Writing Workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll pick up some common parting greetings and be able to practice writing them out. Third, can you talk about cars in your target language? Learn how to say words like tire, windshield, headlights, and more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, must know words and phrases for public transportation. Learn how to say ticket, bus, train, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. Fifth, the 10 habits of highly effective language learners. Wondering which habits will help you succeed with language learning? Then check out this free lesson. Sixth, want the language learning app that gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language Learning for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock bite-sized audio and video lessons that teach you practical conversations and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to make your language learning breakthrough this year and get full access to our complete learning program, then get 31% off Premium and Premium Plus with the breakthrough sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. ¿Qué tal? Hi, how are you? My name is Romina. Mi nombre es Romina y soy tu profesora de español para la clase de hoy. And I am your Spanish teacher for today's lesson. En la clase de hoy vamos a ver la diferencia entre hay versus estar. So today we are going to learn the differences between I versus estar. Um, only in the context of asking for directions, right? When we are trying to locate where things are. So on screen you have a table that illustrates the difference between I and estar. So we're going to start with I. I in Spanish significa there is, there are. So I in Spanish means in English there is, there are right? Um, while está means it is, okay? Um, so the main difference is this, is uh, basically I is something that we're going to use when we need to inquire about something, but we are unsure about that something actually existing nearby, right? Um, so on the, at the bottom of the table, you can see an example, no? Por ejemplo, ¿Dónde hay un restaurante? Uh, where is a restaurant, right? Is there a restaurant? That, that will be the correct translation. Is there a restaurant? Um, so if I ask you, is there a restaurant? Um, I'm, I'm asking you because I'm not sure if there is a restaurant and um, I need a restaurant, but not in a specific one. I'm not after an Indian restaurant or a Thai restaurant, a Mexican, Mexican restaurant, any restaurant will do, okay? So that's why I'm using I. Um, Donde hay un restaurante? So we are basically using it to talk about something um, about its existence, okay? We are, not, we are unsure if there is a restaurant nearby and, and that's why we are asking that. But if we instead decide to say, Donde está? El restaurante? In that case, um, I'm talking about a, an, a specific restaurant, okay? So I'm, I'm literally saying, where is the restaurant? Okay? And, and if I ask this to someone, they're gonna reply, probably, which restaurant are you referring to, right? So that's why in the example we have a, a name, El Mexicano. ¿Dónde está el restaurante mexicano? So Basically, we use está when we know there is a restaurant and we even know the name of the restaurant, okay? And, and we know it's somewhere, uh, just not exactly where, okay? So when you are not being specific, you're going to go for the option I, okay? You're not being specific. But when you're using, um, when you are after something specific, then you're going to be using está. So that's the main difference between these two. And, and this is why I will be using the indefinite, the indefinite articles, okay? The undefined articles. Uh, because you are unsure 
Okay, so you're not saying where is the restaurant, you're saying where is a restaurant. So a is an article that is not defining, okay, it's, it's indefinite, okay? Um, so that's why whenever you're using I, you have to use un, una, unos, y unas. It's incorrect in Spanish to say donde hay el, donde hay las, so the definitive articles, okay, the specific articles. But if you're using está, then in that case, you have to use the definitive articles, the specific articles. So we are going to be using el, la, los, las. Veamos hay y está en acción con unos ejemplos. So let's see these two words, hay and está, with some examples so you can understand this better. On screen now, we have um, two conversations, two very brief conversations between a tourist and a police officer. Un turista, a tourist, and un policía, a police officer. Um, so on the first one, we can see that the tourist is asking, ¿Dónde hay un banco? Please repeat. ¿Dónde hay un banco? ¿Dónde hay un banco? Muy bien. So here the, the tourist is asking, is there a bank? Or I need to find a bank. Where is it? Do you know where, where I can find one? And then the police officer can reply using the exact same verb, ¿no? Hay un banco al frente de la Plaza San Martín. So there is a bank across or in front of a San Martín Square. So in this first conversation, the tourist um, is not really sure if there is actually a bank nearby. Um, so that's why he's using I. He's basically giving away that he's, he doesn't even know if there is a bank nearby. Um, and also, um, he's not concerned about going to a specific bank. Any bank will do. So let's go now to the second conversation. The tourist asks, ¿Dónde está el Banco Nación? Please repeat. ¿Dónde está el Banco Nación? ¿Dónde está el Banco Nación? And again, you can see here that the police officer will be probably using the exact same verb to está um, to reply for this, uh, to reply to this question. Um, so he, in this example, is going to say, el Banco Nación está al frente de la Plaza San Martín. So um, the Nación Bank is across the San Martín Square. So in this case, um, as I explained before, basically the tourist knows that there is a bank nearby. Um, he's just unsure about the exact location of the bank. And also he's been specific about the bank he needs. And that's why he's actually even saying the name of the bank. Muy bien, amigos. Es hora de practicar. Okay, my friends, so now we have to practice what we just learned. Uh, so grab some pen and paper and get ready to practice. On screen, we have incomplete sentences. All you have to do is complete all of them with either I or está. Just uh, take your time. You can post this video now before I give you the answers. Um, just read uh, all of the sentences. Pay attention. Uh, particularly to the articles that are being used and complete the sentence. Okay, vamos con las respuestas. Okay, let's have a look at the answers, okay? So the first one, A, A, is Hay una biblioteca cerca del supermercado. Did you get that right? Vamos con la segunda. El cine está Enfrente del banco. ¿Dónde hay una farmacia? ¿Dónde 
hay un café. ¿Dónde está el correo? La catedral está en el centro de la Plaza Mayor. En mi barrio no hay una estación de tren. La galería de arte está entre la plaza y el centro comercial. El museo no está cerca del banco. El museo está cerca de la plaza central. No está lejos la parada del autobús. Cinco minutos. No hay restaurantes en la playa. El parque está en el centro de la ciudad. Llegamos al final de la clase. This is the end of our lesson. Muchas gracias por ver esta lección. Thank you so much for, for, thank you so much for watching this lesson. Y nos vemos en la próxima clase. I will see you on our next class. Any questions, please don't hesitate to let us know or to contact us. Muchísimas gracias. Adiós, amigos. Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Romina, tu profesora de español. Hi, how are you? My name is Romina and I'm your Spanish teacher for today's class. In today's lesson, we are going to learn some exceptions to the uh, grammatical rules for forming words in, in either masculine or feminine. So gender formation rules, and also um, some exceptions to uh, the formation of, uh, of the number in Spanish, right? So when we are talking about words that are in singular or words that are in plural. Bien, so we are going to start, vamos a comenzar con las excepciones de género. So we're going to start with some exceptions to gender. In Spanish, we learned that words ending in A are feminine. However, on screen you can see several exceptions to this rule, okay? And this is the most basic rule when it comes to uh, gender of nouns, right? Um, so please repeat after me. We're going to go through all these examples and I'm going to give you the translation as well. El día. El día. ¿Qué significa? Significa the day, okay? El día means the day. El clima. El clima. El clima means the weather. El problema. El problema. El problema significa the problem. Very similar to English, right? El idioma. El idioma. El idioma significa the language. It means the language. El arroba. El arroba. Arroba means add symbol. You know, when you're writing an email address, you're going to use arroba. El sistema. El sistema. The system. El tema. El tema. El sofá. El sofá. So, el tema significa the topic, and then el sofá significa the sofa. In Spanish, we also learned that words ending in O are male, right? But here we have some exceptions. So these words are ending in O, but they are actually feminine. So anything, any adjectives that you put after this will have to be feminine, okay, to match this. So let's say, for example, 
uh, you want to say the red hand, okay? You're going to say la mano roja, roja, okay? Um, I don't know why you would say the red hand. It sounds a bit weird. Uh, but just to give you an example, so um, as you can say, um, the, the article, it's feminine. It's just that the noun is ending in O, but it's still feminine. It's just that it's an exception, okay? Um, it, it's incorrect to say mana. We have to say la mano to, to refer to the hat. Okay, vamos a repetir las palabras de esta lista. So um, here on screen I have a few examples and we are going to go through all of them um, and we're going to repeat them twice. Please repeat. La mano. La mano. So as we say before, la mano means the hand. La foto. La foto. La foto means the photo. So in this case, this is not really uh, an exception per se because the full word is actually fotografía, so that ends in A. Um, however, no one says that, it's too long. Um, so we shorten that word into photo, okay? Um, and that, but, but it's still a feminine to us, okay? It's still a, a feminine, feminine noun. So we say la foto. Same thing happens with the next one, la moto. The full word is la motocicleta, but it's such a long word, no one uses it. Um, so instead we just say la moto. So that means the motorcycle. Please repeat, la moto. La moto. And same thing, like the next word is la disco, and that means the nightclub, right? But um, the full word is discotheque, right? La discoteca. So that, that used to end up in A, but again, no one says discoteca. Uh, it's um, quite common just to say la disco, okay? Let's repeat, la disco. La disco. Okay, last one. La radio, the radio, la radio, la radio. Okay, so um, another rule that we learn in Spanish is that um, words ending in R are male, right? Are masculine. Um, however, obviously we have here <laughs> women, la mujer, which is a uh, female, obviously, <laughs> makes sense. So. In Spanish, we say la mujer, although it's ending in R, it's an exception and this is a female, okay? So, uh, please repeat, la mujer. La mujer. Flor, flower, is also an exception. La flor. La flor. The cauliflower in Spanish is also an exception, right? La coliflor. La coliflor. But be careful. There are some words that are actually feminine, so they're uh, femininas, but um, because of their pronunciation, um, they will appear to be male, okay, or, or masculinas. Um, so let's look at this with some examples. Agua, which means water in Spanish, um, it's actually a feminine, uh, a female word. Uh, but because of the pronunciation being on the, the, the stress of the word being on the first A, agua, if I use the uh, feminine article, la, um, in Spanish we feel that it has this very weird sound, okay, like la agua. La agua. It sounds very weird. Um, so instead of using la agua, we use the male article, okay, the masculine article, el agua. But it doesn't mean that water it stops being a, a female word, okay? So as you can see, when we turn this into plural, okay, so let's say you want to say the waters, okay, you're going to say aguas, the plural form. Um, because in the article you are adding an, a, an S 
and that S is, it comes uh, in between these two A's, and then we feel that the sound um, is separated and it sounds nice. <laughs> so that's why we keep it feminine, okay? So in singular, el agua, but then in, in plural, las aguas. I'll give you other examples. We have aula, which means classroom, and then alma, which means soul, okay? So uh, in singular, we're going to say el aula, just because saying la aula sounds very weird. But in plural, there's not going to be any problems. We have an S that stops that sound, and we're going to say las aulas. Same thing with el alma, singular, el alma, plural, las almas. Ahora vamos a ver algunas excepciones de números. So we are now going to see some of the exceptions to the genders of number formation in Spanish. On this video, I think it's quite important to um, see this exception about um, the formation of the plural. Um, so usually when, um, when we have a word that ends on a consonant, okay, like uh, S, right? When, when um, we make the plural form of that word, we usually simply add ES, okay? So on screen at the top, you have the Monday, right? The day of the week, the Monday. Uh, so if you want to talk Mondays, okay, the Mondays, <laughs> the, the plural form of Mondays, if we follow this rule, it should be los luneses. But that's not Spanish. That's incorrect, okay? Um, and this is because the days of the week are um, an exception to the grammatical rule of the, of the plural formation, okay? So just to, to give you an example, um, I'm talking about this rule and there are many others, right? Um, so here on screen we have el lunes, los lunes, el jueves, los jueves, el viernes, in plural, it becomes los viernes. So as I was saying before, there are many other rules about the plural formation, uh, but um, obviously we don't have the time to go through all of them. Um, uh, but I thought this one, it's an important one for you to know because this is something that you will probably use quite often. Okay, the exercise is very simple for this video. Um, all you have to do is uh, complete the blanks with the article, okay? Um, if it's male or female, or um, if it's an exception to the rule. Take a moment, pause the video right now before I give you the answers. Bien amigos, vamos con las respuestas. So my friends, we're gonna check the answers right now, okay? Let's see how many you got right. Let's start with A. We're gonna read all of them through a first, obviously from A to G, and then I'm going to continue from H to N. Okay, the first one. La mano, el pollo, el pan, los mariscos, la moto, la mesa, la flor, el mesero, la radio, la cerveza. El sofá, el tenedor, el pescado, la disco. Okay, I really hope that you got all of this correct. Um, um, just in case you're wondering, um, I'm going to go through all of these words and I'm going to translate them into English in case that you don't know the meaning of one of these um, so the first one is, as we say before, the hand, no? La mano. Then we have the chicken, the bread, the seafood, <laughs> the, the motorbike, the motor, <laughs> the, the motor. No, I don't think you say that. You say the motorbike, right? The bike. Um, the table, the flower, the waiter. But in this case, we're talking about a male waiter, right? Um, waitress in Spanish is mesera. Uh, the radio, uh, or a big favorite, is uh, the beer, <laughs> the sofa, the fork, and then we have the fish, and the last one is the disc. But um, we also use it as the discotheque, right? Like the nightclub. Okay, amigos, eso es todo 
para la clase de hoy. That's it for today's lesson. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And again, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias por ver este video. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you on our next class. Nos vemos en la próxima clase. Adiós. Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello, tu profesora de español. Hi, I'm Brenda Romaniello, your Spanish teacher. Today, we're going to have a look at the difference between pero and sino. These two conjunctions could be extremely difficult for um, Spanish students because they always seem to be translated into but in English. So today I'm going to show you how to identify the difference between them and how to use them correctly in Spanish. When we do translate into English, uh, sometimes we translate them both as but and that is what makes these two conjunctions in Spanish a little bit more difficult to understand when we are supposed to use one and the other. The conjunction pero can be translated into English as, for example, but, however, nevertheless, and except for or except. And sino, we can say that in, in English it means but rather or but instead. So that is something that you can use uh, and try to replace these words pero and sino. See if you can replace it with instead of but, um, maybe try to replace them with instead, uh, instead of, or rather, but rather. And see if that works and if it does, then it's very likely that it's going to be sino and not pero. Let's start with pero. So we're going to start to analyze when we use pero. So remember we said that the meaning of pero will be but, however, nevertheless, and except. And we use pero for two main things. The first thing is to when we have contrasting ideas or contradicting ideas. Usually we're gonna have both pero and sino in two different clauses. So in a sentence, we're gonna have divided the sentence between the first clause, what we're first saying, and then we're going to have the conjunction, and then the second clause will tell us another piece of information. So when we use pero, we use it for contrasting ideas or for contradicting an idea, but it doesn't make the idea completely wrong or erroneous. It doesn't mean that that information is incorrect. We're just contrasting or contradicting that first idea in that first clause. Por ejemplo, let's have a look at one example. No conozco a mucha gente, pero tengo muchos amigos. I don't know a lot of people, but I have a lot of friends. As you can see here, we are contrasting, we're contradicting that first idea of not knowing a lot of people, but at the same time, however, nevertheless, I do have a lot of friends, which seems to be two contradicting ideas, or at least contrasting. But we are not making the first statement wrong. Um, I still don't know a lot of people. So the second use for pero is to talk about an exception. Por ejemplo, for example, you can say something like No me gusta la comida española, pero me gusta la paella. I don't like Spanish food, but I do like paella. And in this case, you can see that we can replace pero in this sentence with except or except for. So I don't like Spanish food except for paella. So uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm still not liking in general Spanish food, which is ridiculous if you ask me, like who doesn't like Spanish food? But, <laughs> but you can see here that I still don't like Spanish food. However, I do eat sometimes uh, with the exception of paella. I do like paella. Now moving on to sino, there's a few things that we need to take into account. Remember that sino, we say that we will translate it into English as but rather or but instead. And we use it here, sino, to uh, contrast ideas, yes, to contradict ideas, but these ideas need to be related. They need to be 
in relation to each other. And the other thing that we need to take into account is that the first clause of, um, of this sentence using sino has to be in a negative form. So, for example, vamos a ver un ejemplo. Let's have a look at one example. La fiesta de cumpleaños de Ana no es hoy, sino mañana. La fiesta de Ana no es hoy, sino mañana. As you can see here, we are comparing, we are contrasting uh, related ideas. And the related ideas that we're comparing here is the day, right? When is the, the, actual, the party actually taking place? As you can see, the first sentence is in negative. No es hoy, yes, so it's not today, but rather tomorrow okay or but instead the party is tomorrow as you can see we're making the first clause the first statement incorrect it's incorrect to say or, or the, the information is incorrect the party is not today it's tomorrow we're not comparing we're not making the first part true uh, it's actually quite the opposite we are stating that the first section of this sentence is actually incorrect there's a few things that we need to take into account when comparing, comparing pero and sino. And that is if it's a negative or affirmative clause, the first one. And if it's a negative clause, usually we're going to use sino, yes? Because we are making the first uh, clause incorrect or wrong, okay? And we need to clarify but rather, but instead something else. Uh, that doesn't mean that we cannot use pero if the first clause is negative. So pero we can use it with the first clause being in a positive or a negative form. So let's have a look at some examples. Let's start with using pero after the first clause being a positive or an affirmative one. Por ejemplo, tengo que ir al supermercado pero no tengo tiempo hoy. As you can see here, tengo que ir al supermercado, I have to go to the supermarket, but I don't have time today. It means that I still have to go to the supermarket uh, and this other situation is happening. So they are contrasting uh, and contradicting ideas without making the first positive um, clause wrong or incorrect. I still have to go to the supermarket. Let's see now an example of when we use pero when the first clause is negative. And this is possible uh, only if these two ideas are not contrasting, they are not completely related, um, they are not necessarily making the other one incorrect or wrong. Por ejemplo, no me gusta la carne, pero me gustan las empanadas criollas. Yes, I don't like meat, but I do like empanadas criollas, which they are delicious. Um, they are specifically from Argentina, where I'm from, and they are made of meat. So, but it, of course, it has other things inside. So maybe that masks the taste, and you do like empanadas, even though you don't eat or you don't like meat. Can you see? We're not com completely making the first statement wrong. You still don't like meat. Uh, but you, uh, with the exception of, as we were seeing before, except for the empanadas. Another example could be, no tengo tiempo de ir al supermercado, pero voy a ir hoy. I don't have time to go to the supermarket, but I'm going to go today. Um, so these two things, they are contradicting ideas in the sense that I still say I don't have the time, but I'm going to make an exception, I'm going to organize my time, and I'm still going to go today. So remember we were saying that there are two meanings or two uses for pero with a negative sentence, and that is when we gave you, I gave you a few examples about when to use it as meaning except, and then now I want to give you an example of when we want to say the two contrasting not related ideas. Por ejemplo, no he visitado Barcelona, pero conozco Madrid. No he visitado Barcelona, pero conozco Madrid. I haven't visited Barcelona, but I've been to, I've traveled to Madrid. 
as you can see this uh, the first one is a negative clause the first clause is negative I'm using but and they're not necessarily contradicting ideas I'm not making the fact that I haven't been to Barcelona incorrect that is still true but I'm also adding information and saying I've been to another city I'm, th I'm still contrasting with the first clause and in the second clause I'm saying I have actually been to or visited Madrid now when we talk about neg the first clause being negative and using sino this will be when we want to contrast ideas that are related and making the first clause incorrect Let's have a look at some examples. Pedro no fue a Barcelona, sino Madrid. Pedro didn't go to Barcelona, but rather it was Madrid. Mi color favorito no es el azul, sino el rojo. My favorite color is not blue, but rather red. As you can see here, blue and red are related and contrasting ideas. We're making the first clause completely incorrect and we're correcting in correcting the information in the second clause and then in the case of um, him not going to Barcelona but rather Madrid again we're just correcting the information muy bien okay so that is the class for today I really hope that now you understand the difference and when to use pero and sino in Spanish thank you so much for watching and I will see you next class adios hasta luego Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello, tu profesora de español. Hi, I'm Brenda Romaniello, your Spanish teacher. Today, we are going to compare Latin American countries in a map. Do you actually know where every single Latin American country is? And what countries do they have next to them? What countries are they under or above in a map? Could you actually point out to each and every single Latin American country in a map if I gave you a name of the, the name of the country. Well, I hope that that's exactly what we're going to learn today in this Spanish lesson. So to start off, we are going to, uh, for comparison, for comparing where exactly these Latin American countries are in a map in Latin America, uh, we are going to use the prepositions of place. So first we are going to have a look at some vocabulary for some prepositions of place that you can use to talk about where these countries are located in comparison to each other. Las preposiciones de lugar, prepositions of place. Repeat after me. A la derecha de... A la derecha de which means to the right of, a la derecha de, a la izquierda de, a la izquierda de, to the left of, a la izquierda de, al lado de, al lado de, or the other option, a un lado de, a un lado de, and these two mean next to, see, ¿sí? al lado de means next to, a un lado de means to one side of, that will be the literal translation. Entre, entre, between, entre, cerca de, cerca de, Close to, cerca de, lejos de, lejos de, far from, lejos de, arriba de, arriba de, this is on top of or above, arriba de, Abajo de, abajo de, or another option, debajo de, debajo de, this means below, debajo de. Muy bien, let's repeat all of them again. Repeat after me. A la derecha de. A la izquierda 
de. Al lado de. A un lado de. Entre. Cerca de. Lejos de. Arriba de. Abajo de. Debajo de. Now we're going to practice with some questions. I'm going to show you the, the Latin America with all the names of the countries in Spanish in a map. And then I'm going to ask you, where is this country? And then we'll have a look at one example on how you can answer to this question. Por ejemplo, ¿Dónde está Belice? ¿Dónde está Belice? Respuesta, Belis está al norte de Honduras y al lado de El Salvador en Centroamérica. O también puedes decir, you can also say, América Central. So when looking at uh, the map of Latin America, we're going to have América Central, Norteamérica y Sudamérica. So you have North America, Central America, and South America. So if you want to mention what part of um, Latin America this country is located, you can also use this as a guide. North America, North America, the Central America is Centro America, y Sud America is South America. Okay, so are you ready to start practicing and comparing where countries are located in a map compared to in comparison to each other? Let's get to it. Please tell me, dime, ¿dónde está Argentina? Remember, try to use as many prepositions of place as you can so that you practice more vocabulary. So the more points of reference that you can give me, the more the, the more points you'll score in this lesson. Respuesta. So this is a possible answer. Your answers might be different depending on what points of reference you decided to um, point uh, for the location of Argentina. But here is an example. Argentina está entre Chile y Uruguay, abajo de Bolivia, cerca de Perú y lejos de México. ¿Dónde está Colombia? Respuesta posible. Colombia está entre Venezuela y Ecuador, arriba de Perú, cerca de Costa Rica y al lado de Panamá en Sudamérica. ¿Dónde está Guatemala? Guatemala está entre México y Honduras, cerca de Cuba y El Salvador y lejos de Chile. ¿Dónde está Perú? Perú Está entre Ecuador y Bolivia, al lado de Brasil, debajo de Colombia, cerca de Argentina y lejos de Haití. ¿Dónde está Panamá? Panamá está entre Costa Rica y Colombia, cerca de Nicaragua y Venezuela, 
en América Central. Muy bien, perfecto, excelente trabajo, good job. I really hope that you were able to answer these questions and giving me as much information and points of reference as possible. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to describe a country based in, a, in the location and what I want you to tell me is what country I'm talking about. Este país está entre Estados Unidos y Guatemala. ¿Qué país es? What country is it? Which country am I talking about? La respuesta es México. México is the answer. Este país está entre Venezuela, Bolivia, Paraguay y al norte de Uruguay. Está lejos de México y está cerca de Chile. ¿Qué país es? What country am I talking about? Brasil. Muy bien. Este país está cerca de Panamá, al sur de Colombia y al norte de Perú. ¿Qué país es? Ecuador. Muy bien. Eso es todo por hoy. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching today's lesson. And I really hope that you now know where these countries, all these Latin American countries, and where Spain is in the world, and you can point them in a map. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next class. Adios. Bueno. Sí, bueno. Habla el banco. Nos preguntábamos si quería pedir un préstamo. Bueno, me gustaría pensarlo antes de decir que sí. Por otra parte, me gustaría comunicarle que ya abrimos una nueva sucursal sobre la avenida Hipólito. ¡Qué bueno! Ya no me tomará tanto tiempo llegar al banco. Entonces, ¿le llamamos el jueves para saber su decisión? Bueno, te espero su llamada. Hasta luego, señor. Fue un placer servirle. Su servicio es muy bueno. Gracias. Hello there, my beautiful, beautiful friends of SpanishPod101.com. As you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And in today's video, we're going to check the word bueno and some synonyms for different uses. Yeah. So, if you're interested, guys, and uh, this video. Woo! Okay, guys. So as you heard in the skit, we uh -huh. use a lot of times the word bueno, but we use it in different contexts and different situations mm -hmm. with different meanings. Exactly. So specifically, uh, we're going to tell you in this video five different uses of this word. Yeah. So don't confuse this word bueno because that's often a, a mistake mm -hmm. that some some students. Uh, confuse the word bueno with bien. Okay. So that's actually for another video. Yeah. But today we're going to talk about five different uses of bueno and mm -hmm. not only that but also some synonyms. So uh -huh. if you are ready guys, let's start with number one. Let's go. Okay. And what's the first thing you say when you answer the phone? Well, in, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. At least in Mexico, we don't say hola. Not really. Mm -hmm. Usually you will hear, you will hear bueno. Bueno, and the other person says, bueno, as well. Bueno, habla tal, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Exactly, so that's the very first thing you say when you answer the phone. Yeah. Bueno. But this is not the only way for answering the phone. We have more synonyms. Mm -hmm. For example, we have, dígame, dígame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or a uh, synonym, uh, diga, just diga, diga. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them mean, hello. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Or rather, like, tell me. Tell me. Well, that's a direct, the direct translation. The direct translation uh -huh. would be tell me. Tell me. But we also have another that is also common, and that's hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is not truly used a lot in Mexico. Uh, yeah, but in some other countries like Guatemala, Honduras, mm -hmm. and in the south of Mexico, I think they use it. 
Yeah, but it, once again, the most common way would be bueno. bueno. So we have bueno, we have dígame, we have diga, we have aló, aló, and even we have uh, buenos días, buenas tardes, and buenas noches. Buenos días, señor Méndez, el habla. You can even add a uh, sí before sí diga. <laughs> sí, dígame. Sí, bueno. Sí, bueno. That's also very common. It sounds like you want to make it more native-ish. <laughs> yeah, but sí, uh, bueno. It sounds cooler. Exactly. Like sí, bueno. Sí, bueno. <laughs> sí, dígame. Sí, dígame. Very yeah, good. Use it, please. Okay, guys. Now let's continue with an expression that I like a lot, and that's mm -hmm. que bueno. Yeah. If you look at this form, we include the word que, mm -hmm. and actually I want to pin point that que is used to demonstrate mm -hmm. what a uh, or how okay and this can be used with nouns with adverbs or with adjectives and this basically um, says or tells about how how an action is done yeah and we have many examples for this uh -huh. uh, okay so que bueno <laughs> que bueno number one que bueno <laughs> but we have some synonyms que espléndido mm. Que espléndido. The next one. Que extraordinario. Yeah. Que extraordinario. I like that one. We also have que maravilla. Que maravilla. Que maravilla. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this sense, bien is the same as bueno. Que bien. Mm -hmm. Que bien. Um, but we also have some slang here. Exactly. Que bárbaro. <laughs> que bárbaro. Que bárbaro. Yeah. And the Mexican ones. Mm -hmm. Que chido. Que chido. Que chido and que chingón. Que chingón. <laughs> que yeah, chingón. That's <laughs> super informal. Super Mexican. Super and informal. Mexican, <laughs> super informal. Just use it with your friends. It's or for uh, the lols. Yeah, the lulls. it's not. It's <laughs> not. Uh, don't use it with everyone, okay? Okay, guys. So the next very common use of bueno is that this is also a filler word. Yeah. Remember that a filler word can help us to buy some time when we don't know what to say or mm -hmm. that we want to figure out how to say it. Yeah. That's how we can use a filler word. And bueno is a very common one. Exactly. Although we have much more. So let's see the four most common filler words. <laughs> of course we have bueno. But we also have este uh, and pues uh, pues uh, like pues mm. <laughs> yeah and entonces entonces uh -huh. mm -hmm. so they will help you to buy time exactly and mm -hmm. this last one entonces is to prompt the other person to tell you what he's thinking okay mm -hmm. so for example if your friend is thinking a lot I would say like entonces yeah yes. like uh, so exactly English. like so okay so now mm -hmm. let's see one example uh, where we are going to put in action this filler word yes señor buenas tardes muy buenas tardes ¿cómo le puedo ayudar? Eh, necesito un tornillo si sí, un tornillo eh, de, pero que tipo de tornillo? Uh, este pues Un tornillo para para madera. Un tornillo para madera, ok. Y lo quiere de punta redonda, punta cuadrada, no lo quiere niquelado, con punta de pico. Pues con punta de pico. Esos no son para madera. Eh, son más bien esos para metal. Con punta okay. redonda sería el más ideal. Pues. Bueno, creo que sí. Bueno, sí, sí. Sí, entonces, eh, ¿de qué tamaño lo quiere? ¿De 3 pulgadas? ¿De 4 pulgadas? ¿De 5 pulgadas? ¿De cuántas pulgadas lo quiere? Uh, bueno. Entonces. Ok, guys, so the next use of bueno is that bueno is an adjective. And as an adjective, it means good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only good. Since this is an adjective, remember that adjectives modify nouns. Yeah. Therefore, obviously, you need a noun, but not only that, you also need to remember that the noun need, needs to match a, a number and gender. Yeah. That is, if it is masculine, feminine, plural, or singular. Mm -hmm. For example, I have... Okay, for example, que bueno eres conmigo. Mm -hmm. Que bueno eres conmigo. I okay. Know. I know. Alicia es una buena persona. 
Alicia es una buena persona. Next one. Los hermanos Aristeo son buenos estudiantes. Los hermanos Aristeo son buenos estudiantes. Mm -hmm. And the last one. Cristina y Salma solían ser buenas amigas. Cristina y Salma solían ser buenas amigas. Y después llegó el Efra e hizo que se pelearan. <risa> Cristina y Salma. Hizo que se pelearan. <risa> ok, guys, so the next one is that uh, we have some synonyms of bueno. And this depends, obviously, on the occasion. Not always are they going to be 100% similar. So be careful with this. Ok, guys, so now let's see some synonyms uh -huh. of the word bueno. However, Bear in mind something, some of these synonyms are not 100% synonyms, but they are used in a kind of similar way. Mm -hmm. For example, for example, espléndido, mm. espléndido, estupendo, estupendo, excelente, excelente, agradable, mm -hmm. agradable. Lindo, lindo, hermoso, hermoso, ok, eh, precioso, <ríe> precioso, encantador, encantador. Mm -hmm. Very good, nice. Yeah. Finally, guys, we also have the word bueno as an affirmation. Yeah, of an course. affirmation. And this means only. Okay. Okay. Bueno? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Now let's see some synonyms of this word. Uh huh. This one is, could be. Está bien. Mm -hmm. Está bien. Or just bien. Mm -hmm. Bien. You can also say. De acuerdo, de acuerdo, but the Mexican way, sale y vale, sale y vale, va, 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 ok, let's, it's like, ok, va, um, for standard Spanish, vale, 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 mm -hmm. por aquí, ya, yeah. vamos por un lado, uh, va, bueno, <laughs> bueno, So that's it for today, my beautiful family of SpanishBoot101.com. Uh, we are really happy for you because you you are still watching us mm -hmm. until right until this moment of this video. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it it took us like three days to make this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had some technical problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot. But well, see you in the next one. Don't forget to write your comment down there to give us your thumbs up. What is your phrase, Diego? And also destroy that like button. And uh -huh. don't forget to download your free PDF cheat sheets at SpanishPod101.com. Yeah, and subscribe to this to the channel and activate the notifications. Yeah, see you in the siguiente. Nos vemos. Bye. Bye, bye, chicos. Oye, Frank, ¿qué tienes? Uh, eh, pues pedí un préstamo al banco. Ok. Y no sé cómo pagarlo. El asunto es que los intereses son muy altos. Oye, no te preocupes. Yo te puedo prestar un poco de efectivo. Oh. Mira, yo entiendo la situación actual con esto de la inflación, los precios altos, yeah. eh, también sé que en, el, en, en la bolsa las acciones bajaron, claro. el cambio de divisas, yo entiendo que ahora es una locura, pero cuentas conmigo. Gracias, amigo. Hello there, my beautiful, beautiful friends of SpanishPol101.com. As you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Vocabulary related to money. Vocabulario yeah. relacionado con el dinero. Super awesome. Exactly. So, if you are interested, guys, enjoy this video. Okay, guys. So, this is a topic that sometimes changes depending on the region you are, mm -hmm. especially in Spanish. We are both from Mexico City and today we're going to see how we call 
uh, the money here in our city. Yeah. Okay. Most of these words are standard, but you might hear some variations of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's start with useful vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And number one is el dinero. Yeah. El dinero. And that's money. Mm -hmm. Number two. We also have el efectivo. El efectivo. And for that, that's a way we call the cash. El efectivo. Now, of course, el dinero mm -hmm. incluye billetes, bills, billetes y monedas. Okay. Coins. Monedas. Coins. Muy bien. Ahora, cuando tú tienes muchas monedas eh, de diferentes denominaciones, entonces tú lo llamas el cambio. Uh -huh. El cambio. Cambio. The change. Ya. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bien. Muy bien. La siguiente palabra es el banco. El banco. Después tenemos un término que no nos gusta. La inflación. La inflación. Otro término muy feo. La crisis la crisis. Pero también tenemos dos adjetivos. Rico, pobre. Rico y pobre. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now that you're talking about the, the bank, el banco, mm -hmm. we can also see another set of vocabulary. Yeah. And this includes la tarjeta de crédito. Sí. Tarjeta de crédito. Ajá. Uh -huh tarjeta de débito, yeah. tarjeta de débito y cheque, 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 mm -hmm. a check, yeah, claro, mm -hmm. and yeah. also another one uh -huh. very useful is el depósito, el depósito, ok guys, now let's see some nouns related to money, ok, algunos sustantivos relacionados con el dinero. Uh -huh. Y la primera es la hipoteca, the mortgage. La hipoteca, the mortgage. Uh -huh. Another one is los ahorros. Los ahorros, and that's the savings. Uh -huh. La siguiente es la deuda. La deuda, the, the debt. Uh -huh. Ok, muy bien. We also have el crédito. Ajá. The credit. El crédito. Muy bien. Pero también la última palabra es el préstamo. El préstamo. Bien. A loan. Ajá. So, for example, ten mucho cuidado cuando pidas un préstamo al banco. Uh -huh. Tienes que asegurarte que tienes suficientes ahorros para poder pagarlo. Ok. Gracias por ese consejo. Sí. <risa> ese consejo te doy. Porque tu amigo Diego soy. Ah, muy bien. Ok, let's talk about some verbs related to money. Algunos verbos relacionados con el dinero. El primero de ellos es gastar. Gastar. También comprar comprar. Uh -huh. El tercero, ahorrar, ahorrar. Uh -huh. Cuarto, pedir prestado, pedir prestado. Uh -huh. Y el último, prestar, prestar. Vamos a ver un ejemplo. Recuerda ahorrar lo suficiente para que puedas comprar uh -huh. todas las cosas que tú quieres. Ah, y no te olvides que no tienes que gastar tu dinero en cosas innecesarias, ni mucho menos pedir prestado al banco para seguir comprando cosas que no necesitas. You already did, right? 
Okay, in this section, we're going to give you two expressions. Yes, only two, because in the future, we are going to give you another video of expressions, Mexican expressions related to money. Yeah, very interesting. We have a lot. Sí, sí, we sí. truly use a lot. Uh -huh. So, uh, the first one is this. Ya no quiero gastar. Um, a veces me cuesta llegar a fin de mes. Oh. Ya no quiero gastar. A veces me cuesta llegar a fin de mes. Mm -hmm. And llegar a fin de mes means to make the ends meet. Oh, ok, muy mm -hmm. bien. Ok, la siguiente. Estoy en números rojos y apenas llevamos 10 días de este mes. Estoy en números rojos y apenas llevamos 10 días en este mes. And the expression is estar en números rojos, to be in the red, or to have little money, little, 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 little money, <laughs> estar en ro números rojos. Good. Okay, now for the next section we are going to give you different ways to call the money mm -hmm. in Mexico. So guys, y en México, ¿cómo le llamamos yeah. al dinero? <laughs> so the first one is billuyo, billuyo. Remember that for this there is no a direct translation because all these terms mean uh, basically money. Uh -huh. So, billuyo. El billuyo. El billuyo. We also have morlacos. Los morlacos. Mm -hmm. And we also have baro. Baro. El baro. El baro. Mm -hmm. We also have la lana. La lana. Mm -hmm. Traes lana? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another one, la luz. Luz. Mm -hmm. Like this type luz. of luz. Yeah. Ajá. ¿Tienes luz? Uh, ¿Traes una luz? Préstame una luz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very weird, but yeah. Ok, el siguiente, feria. La feria. Mm -hmm. And it is not like a... Like a fair. Ajá, no, no, no. La feria, mm -hmm. money. Traigo feria, no te preocupes. Mm -hmm. Traigo feria, no te preocupes. Ok. Uh, when we are talking about cambio, change, we can also hear morraya, 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 mm -hmm. here in Mexico City because uh, there are some differences in, in, in other states. regions, yeah, uh -huh. but yeah, at least here in Mexico City it's very common to hear morraya, morraya, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and the last one which is very standard mm -hmm. because uh, many, many countries have it, is plata. La plata. That's correct. O duros. Duros, los duros. ¿Tres duros? I've never said duros. Unos duros. Bueno, nosotros no, pero... Oh, like in other countries? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the end of this video. No te olvides de darnos tu pulgar arriba y de suscribirte a este canal. Muchas gracias, familia de SpanishPod101.com. Déjanos tu comentario. ¿Qué opinas de este video y del dinero? Mm, ¿Qué claro. opinas del dinero? ¿Qué opinas del dinero? <risa> okay. yeah. eh, da click en las notificaciones y no te olvides, don't forget to get your free lifetime account at SpanishFood101.com. See you in the next video. Hasta luego. See you guys. Hello there, my beautiful, beautiful friends of SpanishPod101.com. As you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And in today's video, we're not going to start it with a skit because we have rather several skits during mm -hmm. the whole video. Yeah. So guys, today's topic is quite interesting because today we're going to check Mexican expressions for reactions. Mm -hmm. Very common reactions. So guys, if you are mm -hmm. interested, and do this video. Woo! Okay, guys, so Mexican expressions are really a great way to communicate with other native speakers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may want to have a reaction to what someone said, and the best way to do it is with some expressions that we're going to teach you today. Yes. So we have several categories mm -hmm. and mind you, sometimes the words that we're about to tell you have different meanings and we can mm -hmm. do actually whole videos explaining each one of them. Yeah. However, we're going to tell you the most common use. 
or at least the meanings for this video. Yeah, uh, the, the meanings for, for this video. For reactions. Mm -hmm. Which also happen to be the most common ones. So let's start with the first classification and this is when you want to reaffirm what the other person said. You want the other person to say again or to reaffirm what he just said. Uh -huh. Normally you use it like in a rhetorical sense. Sí. You don't care uh, whether the answer is true or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but also you can do it as a sign of disbelief. Yeah. For example, for example, neta. Neta. Mm -hmm. We also have a poco. A poco. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we even have some expressions that are only for this belief. Okay. And mind you, you can use the previous ones, a poco, and mm -hmm. also neta. Okay. With one of these expressions. So mm -hmm. you, you can join together two expressions. So the expressions for this belief are the following. No inventes. No inventes. Mm -hmm. You can also say no manches. No manches. Mm -hmm. Just mind that you, okay, you can just use this one with friends and with people that you trust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because sometimes it is kind of respectful to say this one no manches but also we have a ah, caray or just caray mm -hmm. <laughs> a ah, caray and we have uh, well another one andale 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 mm -hmm. yeah yeah and even we have one that is not a hundred percent family friendly so just use it with your close friends okay and that's no mames Okay. No mames. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's watch a skit uh, with these expressions in action. Se murió Pablo. No manches, neta. Sí. Oye, pero quién es Pablo? Ah, a poco no sabes quién es Pablo? Es el cantante de la banda Tracayosa, la mejor agrupación de banda de todo el mundo. Ah, no inventes. Claro que lo conozco. Neta, se murió. Sí, lo vi al menos en su cuenta de Instagram. Estoy muerto. <laughs> okay, guys, so the next category is when you have a surprise, whether it is good or bad. Okay. okay? However, bear in mind that this is a surprise, something mm -hmm. unexpected. And for this, we have two very common expressions. Okay. And <laughs> I was waiting you for say. No, that's your turn. <laughs> yeah, I know. And the first one is a la madre. A la madre. But we also have que pedo. Que pedo. Well, it is funny for me to say it in that way, like uh, like uh, teaching this. Like teaching que this. Pedo. Que pedo. <laughs> like two words. Yeah, because it pedo. is very natural. <laughs> yeah. Now. Uh, other set of expressions are when you know, and it's not a surprise, but you know that something bad, it, this is not for good, but something bad happened. Uh -huh. And for this, we have several words. Okay, and the first one is chale. 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 Okay, and the other one, when you are having a really bad time. Ya nos cayó el chahuistle. Or, ya me cayó el chahuistle, ya le cayó el chahuistle, ya les cayó el chahuistle. Ya te cayó el chahuistle. Ya te cayó el chahuistle. Yeah, good. Okay. And, and this is, actually, we created a video before explaining ya mm -hmm. nos cayó el chahuistle. Yeah. Yeah. We explain it better in another one. Okay. We also have en la torre. En la torre. En la torre. And then, uh, when you are in sh when you are in shock, mm -hmm. okay, you can say madres, <gasps> madres. When something really bad happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's start with bad words, maybe. Well, kind of. Okay, they are not that strong, but still. Okay, for example, carajo, carajo. Mm -hmm. 
You can use this one uh, when you're angry. Carajo. <laughs> sí, uh, carajo. carajo. Mm -hmm. Ok. And then we have mierda. Ah. Mierda. Uh, that's <laughs> mierda. Two syllables. <laughs> that's a bad word. So let's see a skit using these expressions. Mm -hmm. ¿Viste eso? Sí, 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 claro. Grábalo, grábalo. Ah, qué pedo, no funciona mi cámara. Oh, no, ah, no. Madres, eso le va a salir muy caro. Chale, y además es el carro del año. La reparación va a salir muy, muy cara. Ok, guys, so the previous ones were when something bad happened. Yeah. And what happens when something good okay. happens instead? Well, for this we have three very common expressions. Yep, three. Um, well, this one is que chido. Que chido. Que chido. <laughs> And then we have que fregón. Que fregón. Mm -hmm. Que fregón. That's, I like that one. And we also have another which is very 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 informal and it is que chingón <laughs> super mexican que chingón uh, yeah uh, yeah that's correct good so <laughs> que chingón now we also have one very common expression and that's when you don't know what to do and mm -hmm. you are kind of desperate okay and this word is híjole Híjole. Mm -hmm. Híjole. Híjole. Ay, no. ¿Qué, ¿Qué hago? <laughs> Híjole. Híjole. That's correct. So, now let's see this in a skit. Mire, Fra, este collar me lo regalaron hace poco. ¡Ah, qué fregón! Mm -hmm. ¡Qué chido! Ah, ¿Y ahora? ¿Qué ¡Híjole! Tienes? ¡Híjole! Es que necesito ir al baño. ¿Sabes si hay algún baño aquí cerca? Ah, no, no creo. Estamos en medio del parque. Eh, eh, pero hay muchos árboles. Puedes aprovechar. Pues no hay mucha gente. Ok, guys. So now let's continue with the invitations. Uh -huh. When someone invites you, it doesn't matter what kind of invitation, and you want to agree with it, then we can say one of these two options. Okay, we can say super sí, super sí. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we can say this one, halo, halo. Yeah, nowadays it is really frequent to hear halo. <laughs> yeah. And even you can combine them, super sí, halo. Super sí, halo. The yeah. perfect combination. The perfect combination. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now, finally, let's see what happens when two people agree on something. Okay. What do we have for that? For that, we have va. Va. Va que va. Va que va. Sale y vale. Sale y vale. Mm. Vientos. Vientos. I wind. The plural form of wine. Viento. Wine. Vientos. Wines. Vientos. But because it's wind, right? Yeah, I. It's wind. 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 Ah, sí. The winds. Wind. <laughs> sorry, sorry, okay? Okay. Vientos, vientos. And it's because vientos sounds like bien. Viento. Vientos. Yeah, Warplay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's see an, an es skit. Yeah, a let's skit. go. Let's go and, and watch a skit. Yeah. Bueno. ¿Qué onda, Efra? ¿Cómo andas? Todo bien. Oye, hay una fiesta con Enrique hoy a las 10. ¿Quieres ir? Super sí. Jalo. Pero mira, hacen falta botanas. ¿Cómo ves? ¿Las llevas tú? Va que va. Lo hago. Vale, entonces paso por ti a las 9 y media a tu casa. Vientos, ahí nos vemos. Eso es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias, mi familia de SpanishPod101.com. Thank you for watching us. Please, don't forget to give us your thumbs up. 
To share this video with other learners, write your comments down there, subscribe to this channel, click on the notifications and don't forget to get free PDF cheat sheets in the description of this video. That's correct. Uh -huh. Well, get now your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com and there you will find these free PDF cheat sheets. So, see you in the next video. Vi video, ok, sí, Hasta nos luego. vemos, adiós. Oye, Fra, y cuéntame, ¿cómo estuvo tu domingo familiar? Oh, primero nos levantamos a las 7 de la mañana, después nos subimos al carro para dirigirnos hacia las pirámides de Teotihuacán. Mm. Sí, mientras mi papá manejaba, nosotros cantábamos canciones de Luis Miguel. Luego llegamos a las pirámides, pero sorpresivamente no había nadie, había muy pocas personas. Entonces pudimos subir, pudimos bajar e ir a todos lados. Más tarde regresamos a la ciudad, comimos juntos y al final tomamos un café. Estuvo muy bueno. ¿Y wow. tú? ¿Qué tal estuvo tu domingo? Mira, primero que nada, yo no podría levantarme temprano el domingo. Mm. Es el único día en el que descanso. Hello there, my beautiful, beautiful family of SpanishPod101.com. As you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And in today's video, we're going to check super useful temporal linking words. Yeah. Especially, these are useful for telling a story, mm -hmm. like you did in the previous skit. Of course. So, if you're interested, guys, hey, use this video. Woo! Okay guys, so the temporal linking words are very important because these help us with whenever we're telling a story. Uh -huh. Because these help us place an action with respect to other actions or other moments. Yeah. These are very useful for the speaker. Okay guys, mm -hmm. so take out your pen and notebook and write this down because let's start with what to say whenever an action is starting. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so the first one. Al principio. Mm. Al principio. That's for ah, the beginning of a ah, story. At the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, al principio el sabor no me gustaba, pero después me volví adicto. Yeah. Al principio el sabor no me gustaba, pero después me volví adicto. Nice. Okay. The next one. Primero. Primero. Firstly. Eh, primero hicimos algunos ejercicios juntos en la clase Primero hicimos algunos ejercicios juntos en la clase Yeah, although these are really standard ways to start the, the well, for the beginning of a story uh -huh. We also have two more that are more like daily Spanish Okay These are also very common And the first one is Primero que nada. Primero que nada. Primero que nada. Uh -huh. Mira, primero que nada, agradezco que estés aquí. Uh -huh. Ok, um, we have a very similar one. Antes que nada. Antes que nada. Uh -huh. Antes que nada, les quiero dar la bienvenida a todos. Uh -huh. Antes que nada, les quiero dar la bienvenida a todos. That's correct. And after you say that, you start with your speech, <laughs> with your story. Sí, ¿no? claro, claro. <laughs> Okay, guys, so after you use these linking words for mm -hmm. marking the start of, uh, of a story, uh -huh. then you need a sequence. Of course. And what can we use for a sequence? Mm -hmm. Well, you can use for this the ordinal numbers. Okay. So you can say primero mm -hmm. or en primer lugar. Mm -hmm. Then you say segundo or in segundo lugar. Claro. Mm -hmm. And this is useful, for example, when you are reading a recipe. Yeah. Like, primero, mm -hmm. corta la cebolla. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. En segundo lugar, o segundo, eh, échalo en la olla. Claro. Oh, eso rimó. Corta cebolla y después mételo en la olla. Ah, sí, es cierto. Sí. <laughs> ah, That's <sí>. true. <laughs> ok. Um, bien. And then, we have some other useful words. The first one, luego, luego, después, después, and then, más tarde, 
más tarde. In this situation, in this situation, they are synonyms. Yeah, they are interchangeably. Uh -huh. yeah. You can use it, you can use them all, change the other one for the other. Hmm? Well, change one for the other one. <laughs> yeah. For example, más tarde comprendí que él era un buen hombre. Más tarde comprendí que él era un buen hombre. You can use después comprendí que él era un buen hombre. O luego comprendí que él era un buen hombre. Yeah, they are synonyms. And remember uh -huh. that these are helpful for marking a sequence. So, yeah. primero, then you can use segundo, then you can use después, then you can use más tarde, and then you can use luego. Luego. Ajá. Uh -huh. So, what about entonces? Okay. Is it useful for, for marking a sequence? Mm -hmm. Many Spanish learners use it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, entonces mm -hmm. basically marks a specific time in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, for example, y fue en ese entonces mm -hmm. cuando me di cuenta que ella iba a ser el amor de mi vida. Mm -hmm. Y fue en ese entonces cuando me di cuenta que ella iba a ser el amor de mi vida. Uh, ¿Ya? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you look so fake. Uh. I'm sorry. Okay, so the next one is pronto. Mm -hmm. And pronto is also super useful because this is soon or soon after. Soon after as well. Uh -huh. Now, um, this is especially useful because you can use it as pronto or muy pronto. Okay? For example... Muy pronto me di cuenta que me había metido en un abismo sin retorno. Ah. <risa> ok, once again. Muy pronto me di cuenta que me había metido en un abismo sin retorno. Eh, en un abismo sin retorno. Ah. <risa> ok, so, we also have durante. Durante. Mm. Por ejemplo, durante esos segundos... Toda clase de pensamientos cruzaron por mi cabeza. Durante esos segundos, toda clase de pensamientos cruzaron por mi cabeza. Ajá, muy wow. buena. Ok, también tenemos en cuanto y tan pronto como. They are synonyms. Ajá, they are synonyms. Just keep this in mind. They are linking words for using... When talking about past events, mm -hmm. okay? Or a story, when you're telling a story. Okay, yeah. but in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, let's continue. O sea, en cuanto y tan pronto como, synonyms. For example, tan pronto como oyó la campana, Kaiser empezó a correr. Kaiser is my dog. <laughs> tan pronto como oyó la campana, empezó a correr. Or you can use en cuanto. En cuanto oyó la campana, Kaiser empezó a correr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Okay, guys, so the next linking word is mientras. Mm -hmm. And mientras is for setting a context. Yep. Okay, and this can be translated as while. Uh -huh. Okay, so for example, mientras escuchaba mi música favorita, mm -hmm. mi madre me llamó. Oh. Mientras okay. escuchaba mi música favorita, mi madre me llamó. Uh -huh. And we also have another super useful linking word, and that's mientras tanto. Mientras tanto, which is meanwhile. That mm -hmm. is two actions happening at the same time. Uh -huh. Okay. For example, Efraín y yo nos quedamos bebiendo, mm -hmm. y mientras tanto, mis amigos fueron a comprar más botanas. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, let's talk about linking words for marking the end of a sequence. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, okay, good. so when you want to emphasize the, the ending of a sequence of, of, uh, of events, events yeah. uh -huh, you, you will need these words. The first one, al final. Al final. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For example, al final... Decidimos no presentar cargos en su contra. Mm. Al final decidimos no presentar cargos en su contra. Ok, the next one, very similar. Finalmente. 
finalmente. So you usually use finalmente when you want to express the the last step of a process, mm -hmm. okay? Of a sequence, yeah. Or a sequence, for example. Finalmente dejé la gelatina en el refrigerador. <laughs> Yeah. Finalmente dejé la gelatina en el refrigerador. Yeah. So here once again, so al final mm -hmm. marks the end or the end result of something, right? Uh -huh. And finalmente is the end of a, of a sequence. Uh -huh. okay. But they can also be synonyms. Yeah, right? they, they can be synonyms when you are talking about eventually. For um, example, for example, finalmente puedo ser alguien en la vida. <laughs> Finalmente puedo ser alguien en la vida. Or, al final puedo ser alguien en la vida. Yeah. Al final puedo ser alguien en la vida. Yeah. So, they are synonyms only when you want to say eventually. Ok, so you have al final and finalmente when you want to express the meaning of eventually. But we also have a third synonym. Uh -huh. When you want to mean eventually. Pay attention on this. So, the third one is al fin. Yeah. Al fin. That's For example, correct. al fin puedo ser alguien en la vida. Al fin puedo ser alguien en la vida. O al final puedo ser o alguien en la vida. O al final o finalmente. Finalmente. Yeah. yeah. Very good, very mm -hmm. good. Now, let's talk about the formal ones. Uh -huh. And this, once again, this help marking the end of a sequence. Yeah. And the first one is... Por último. Ok. Por último. Uh -huh. And the synonym for this is para terminar. Uh -huh. Para terminar. Ya. Yeah. So, para terminar este video, quiero agradecerles a todos ustedes por vernos. Y claro que sí, nos vemos en el siguiente video. Esto es todo por hoy. Por favor, danos tu pulgar arriba. Escribe tu comentario allá abajo. Pero también suscríbete a este canal. Subscribe to SpanishPod101.com y da clic en las notificaciones. Y por cierto, get your free PDF cheat sheets. Uh -huh. SpanishPod101.com Your free lifetime account. Uh, and your free lifetime account. Yeah, <laughs> see you. En la próxima. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what are you doing? After watching this video, you'll be able to answer this question and tell someone something about what you're writing. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. ¿Qué haces? Escribo mi diario. Once more with the English translation. ¿Qué haces? What are you doing? Escribo mi diario. I'm writing my journal. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What are you doing? That's... ¿Qué haces? Listen to it again. ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces? This Spanish sentence literally translates as what do, but it means what are you doing? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Escribo Object This Spanish sentence literally translates as I write object, but it means I'm writing object. For example, I'm writing my journal. Escribo mi diario. Escribo mi diario. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern. My journal. Mi diario. Mi diario. My journal. Mi diario. My goals. Mis metas. Mis metas. My goals. 
Mis metas. My dreams. Mis sueños. Mis sueños. My dreams. Mis sueños. A to-do list. Una lista de deberes. Una lista de deberes. A to-do list. Una lista de deberes. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. ¿Qué haces? Escribo mis metas. What are you doing? ¿Qué haces? I'm writing my goals. Escribo mis metas. ¿Qué haces? Escribo mis sueños. What are you doing? ¿Qué haces? I'm writing my dreams. Escribo mis sueños. ¿Qué haces? Escribo una lista de deberes. What are you doing? ¿Qué haces? I'm writing a to-do list. Escribo una lista de deberes. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what are you doing? ¿Qué haces? Imagine you're writing your goals. Do you remember how to say, my goals? Mis metas. Mis metas. Say, I'm writing my goals. Escribo mis metas. Now answer the question saying you're writing your goals. ¿Qué haces? Escribo mis metas. Now imagine you're writing your dreams. Do you remember how to say, my dreams? Mis sueños. Mis sueños. Say, I'm writing my dreams. Escribo mis sueños. Now, answer the question saying you're writing your dreams. ¿Qué haces? Escribo mis sueños. Now, imagine you're writing a to-do list. Do you remember how to say a to-do list? Una lista de deberes. Una lista de deberes. Say, I'm writing a to-do list. Escribo una lista de deberes. Now, answer the question saying you're writing a to-do list. ¿Qué haces? Escribo una lista de deberes. Hi everyone, I'm Rosa. How are your Spanish listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear the question in Spanish. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Un hombre y una mujer están hablando. ¿Por qué llegó tarde el hombre? Siento llegar tarde. ¿Te quedaste dormido otra vez? No, hoy me levanté a las seis. Entonces, ¿por qué llegaste tarde otra vez? Bueno, el autobús no venía. Ah, ¿en serio? Para serte sincero, el autobús llegó un poco tarde, pero me equivoqué y me bajé en la parada incorrecta. 
Tuve que venirme caminando hasta acá. ¿Por qué llegó tarde el hombre? Un hombre y una mujer están hablando. ¿Por qué llegó tarde el hombre? Siento llegar tarde. ¿Te quedaste dormido otra vez? No, hoy me levanté a las seis. Entonces, ¿por qué llegaste tarde otra vez? Bueno, el autobús no venía. Ah, ¿en serio? Para serte sincero, el autobús llegó un poco tarde, pero me equivoqué y me bajé en la parada incorrecta. Tuve que venirme caminando hasta acá. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to learn a language two times faster by learning in pairs. And no, this does not mean learning with another person. But if you're looking for a way to learn more, improve faster, and do both input and output instead of just focusing on one language skill at a time, then this month's episode is for you. You'll discover one, how learning in pairs gets you mastering more of the language, and two, how you can apply this tactic to your learning. So, how can you learn a language in pairs? Part one, how adding a human dynamic boosts your motivation. First, what's learning in pairs exactly? Think about it. When we study a language, a lot of the time we focus on one skill at a time, right? For example, one day you'll focus on grammar, another day you'll focus on speaking. For the most part, we only focus on one skill at a time. Learning in pairs is combining two skills, pairing them up. For example, reading and writing, listening and speaking, and grammar and vocabulary, just like that. Why do this? Is there anything wrong with focusing on one thing at a time? Not at all. Any time you spend learning is time well spent. But learning in pairs has some advantages and can help you master a language faster. Number one, it's a better use of your time. For example, instead of spending 10 minutes on a word list, you can spend five minutes reviewing and the other five minutes saying those words out loud. So that would involve vocabulary and speaking. So you improve two skills at the same time. And you end up remembering the words better because you're practicing them in two different ways. Number two, you're forced to do input and output. Input is where you take the language in, like reading or listening, and output where you produce the language, like speaking or writing. That way, you get to practice what you learn instead of just passively taking it in. And passively taking things in isn't the best way to actually speak the language fluently. You need practice. So by including output, you're actively including practice into every session that you do. And number three, learning in pairs breaks up the monotony of doing one thing at a time. You might also wonder, do the skills have to be related? They can be, like listening and speaking, or reading and writing. But it's really up to you and what works for you. In the next part, we'll show you some examples of pairs and how to practice them with our program. But to recap, learning in pairs means pairing up two skills, like reading and writing, speaking and listening, grammar and writing, grammar and speaking, as well as other variations that you can come up with. So if you read for five minutes, you should also write for five minutes or speak for five minutes instead of reading for 10 minutes. Plus, words and grammar rules tend to stick better when you practice them in different ways. This is a learning tactic called interleaving. So here's how you can learn in pairs with our learning program. Part two, how you can apply this tactic to your learning. First, for listening and speaking, take our audio and video lessons. Listen to the conversations and shadow along, or repeat what you hear. To make it easier, download the dialogue tracks, which give you just the conversations, and listen and shadow along with them. For reading and writing, you can read the lesson dialogue and then write it out. You can do this with the line-by-line -line dialogue or with our lesson notes. So reading and writing, listening and speaking, these are the most obvious pairs to do. You can also try grammar and speaking. 
For every grammar rule you learn in our lessons, spend an equal amount of time creating and saying example sentences out loud. For example, if you learned the potential form, I am able to, or I can, come up with and say lines like, I'm able to run fast, I am not able to run fast, I can jump, I cannot jump, and then say them out loud. You can also do this while pairing grammar and writing. For every rule you learn in our lessons, write out the example sentences. Next, you can also try vocabulary and speaking. Use our free vocabulary lists. Review them first for five minutes, and then spend the next five minutes saying them out loud. You can also try listening and writing. If you're an intermediate or an advanced learner, listen to a lesson conversation and write it out as you hear it. Or, if you want something easier, play our vocabulary builder lessons, where you hear just the words and write them out. These are just a few examples of how to learn in pairs. Feel free to create other pairs that we haven't mentioned. And let us know which ones you came up with and how they worked for you. Leave a comment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the halfway point and how to keep going with language learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. You want to learn a language and succeed, right? But where do you start and what do you do? There's grammar, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So much to do and no clear pathway to follow. And it can feel overwhelming, right? But what if you had a clear step-by-step -step path of lessons that taught you everything you needed to know and took you from absolute beginner to advanced and all you had to do was just follow the pathway? Well, you can do just that with our recommended learning pathway. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. So, how does our recommended pathway help you learn the language fast? One, you get a clear starting point. With any goal you have, it's important to know where to start and what steps to take. Otherwise, you quickly get discouraged. So that's where our recommended pathway comes in. The pathway is simply a collection of audio and video lessons to learn with, and assessments that test you on what you've learned in the last few lessons. So you get a clear step-by-step -step pathway of lessons laid out for you. Just follow the pathway, complete the lessons, do the assessments, and that's it. You'll find the recommended pathway on your dashboard and in the lesson library. Two, you get lessons that are right for you. When you sign up and set your learning level, whether absolute beginner, intermediate, or advanced, we give you a level-appropriate pathway. There's level one for absolute beginners, meaning you have no experience, level two for beginners with some experience, and all the way to level five for advanced learners. So your learning experience is tailored to you and where you are in your journey. Three, you can level up your language skills instead of wondering if you're improving. How? As you're going through the pathway, you're constantly learning with the lessons, and you're constantly getting tested on what you've learned, with our lessons and multiple choice and hand-graded assessments. You'll find the assessments peppered throughout the pathway after every few lessons. And once you're finished with the level one, absolute beginner path, we give you beginner, level two, then intermediate, level three, and all the way up to advanced. Four you can easily stay on track and reach your language goal. Sticking with goals can be hard, especially when you don't see a clear path from where you are to where you want to be. But with the recommended pathways, you get a clear step-by-step -step pathway of lessons. All the lessons are laid out in front of you. Just do one lesson a day and follow the path until the end. By the end of that pathway, you'll level up your language. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with language learning and if you just want one clear pathway to follow, take advantage of our recommended learning pathway. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Want to speak more of your target language? Well, here's a completely free way to boost your vocabulary so you can understand more, speak more, and increase your fluency. In this quick guide, you'll learn all about our free vocabulary lists, 
how you can unlock hundreds of vocabulary lists that we give only to our users, and how you can learn new words and phrases fast without having to memorize for hours. But first, if you don't yet have access to our free vocabulary lists, be sure to sign up for a free lifetime account. Just click the link down in the description to sign up right now. So, how do these free vocabulary lists increase your fluency? Here's how. First, you can boost your vocabulary and range of expression with hundreds of vocabulary lists spanning all the must-know topics. Just look for the vocabulary lists inside the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. And there, you'll find lists for all kinds of topics, such as introducing yourself, talking about weather, the most common conversational phrases, holidays like Valentine's Day, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, and much more. Second, you can practice your listening skills. By hearing the words at both native speed and at the slower half speed. Just click on the speaker icon next to each word to hear it at normal speed, and click a second time to hear the word at half speed, and you'll easily start understanding the word anytime you hear it. Third, you can practice your speaking skills with the voice recorder, a premium feature inside the vocabulary lists. Just click on the microphone icon to record yourself saying the word or phrase. You can also listen to the native pronunciation and your own pronunciation side by side. That way, you can instantly hear how close you are to the native speaker and how to improve. Fourth, you can easily review the words with the vocabulary slideshow tool. Just click the Play Slideshow button at the top and sit back and listen to the words. You can also play the slideshow on loop until all of the words and phrases are stuck in your brain. And fifth, if you want to master these words even faster, you can save them to your word bank or study them with the flashcards. Both are premium features. The word bank is your personal collection of key vocabulary, where you can also create principal vocabulary study sheets. And with flashcards, you can drill the words and retain them forever, thanks to our smart spaced repetition system. So if you want to boost your vocabulary and speak more of your target language, then get access to our free vocabulary lists. Sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Want to easily remember new vocab and phrases? Fact. Everyone, beginners and advanced learners alike, forgets new words the first time they learn them. So what's the secret to remembering? What do smart learners do? They note them down and review them later. And you can do this with our study tool called the Word Bank, your extended brain for language learning. And in this video, you'll discover, one, how to save keywords and phrases, two, how to review the words so that you never forget them, and three, how to create your own principal vocabulary worksheets. But first, if you don't yet have access to this tool and our lessons, just click the link down in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. First, what is the Word Bank? The Word Bank is a premium study tool, and it's your personal language database, where you can save new words and phrases with a single click, review them all in one spot, and never forget them. Think of it as your extended brain for language learning. Look for the Word Bank in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site, or inside the menu in our app. So, how do you take full advantage of this powerful study tool? Two, how to save keywords and phrases. If you're taking a lesson and want to save key vocab, simply go to the vocabulary section, select the words you'd like to save, and click on Add to Word Bank. If you're using the core word list, like the 2,000 most common words, or the vocabulary lists, select the words, go to Add Selected Words, and click on Word Bank. Now, the words and phrases are saved in your word bank, and you can even organize the entries with labels, like adjectives, verbs, or phrases. Three, how to review the words. Once you save the words to your word bank, you can easily see all of them, all in one spot. With every word or phrase, you get the audio pronunciation, the translation, and even the related lessons where they're introduced. That way, you can review the words one by one. If you'd like to study words with flashcards, just click on Sync to Flashcard Deck. This will create a flashcard deck of your word bank entries for you to study. Four, how to create your own printable vocabulary worksheets. 
If you want to have physical worksheets and practice writing the words on paper, then click on Printer Friendly Version and print out your Word Bank entries. You can even export your Word Bank as PDF, CSV, or XML files. Remember, you can use this powerful feature with flashcards, lessons, and vocab lists, so take advantage right now. Save new words and phrases to your Word Bank with a single click. Review them all in one spot and never forget them with the Word Bank feature. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.